Hello app creators. The lesson for April 29th is on conditional statements. When we talk about conditional statements in code, those statements make decisions that are based on conditions that are going on uh, within the program. It could be on the data that's stored in there in the form of variables or values and properties. It could be things that are provided by different sensors on the device, like the accelerometer or a GPS. And it's also based on the, the logic of the code itself that was created by the app creator. We don't always see conditional statements in coding languages. We also see conditional statements in our everyday life. So for example, if I say, if it's raining outside, then I'll wear a raincoat. That's a conditional statement. I'm only gonna wear a raincoat based on the condition of the weather. Or if I say, if it's Saturday, I could sleep in and not set my alarm. That's a conditional statement as well. The condition is the day of the week, Saturday. And if it is Saturday, then I can do two things. I can sleep in and not set my alarm. If the road is closed, then I'll take another route. And if I'm out of toilet paper, then I'll cry because there isn't any at the store. All of those things are conditional statements that have nothing to do with coding. App Inventor has conditional statements. There's three main types of conditional statements, but they're all really a, a variant of one basic statement, and that's the if-then statement. In addition to the if-then statement, we have the if-then-else statement and the if-then-else-if statement and we'll go over uh, those in more detail here. Doesn't matter which variant we use, all three of those statements use a test. It looks at the variables or it looks at the value of a sensor or some other condition and that test has to evaluate to either true or false. The first one is the if-then statement. It's the most basic type of conditional statement in App Inventor 2. You can see a picture of the code block there on the right. It just has two sockets to it, the if socket and the then socket. We put the test next to the if, and if that test evaluates to true, then the code in the then socket executes. If it evaluates to false, that test, then the, the code that's in the then just gets skipped. Here's an example of some blocks of code using the basic if-then. If our variable weather is set to sunny, then our transportation mode is going to be to walk to school. It doesn't say anything about what happens when it's not sunny. The next variant is the if-then-else. And you can see it looks just like the if-then, except there's an extra socket added on there for the else. Once again, the if test has to evaluate to true. If it does, then the code in the then socket execute and the code in the else socket is skipped. But this time, if it evaluates to false, then we execute the code in the else socket and skip the code that's in the then socket. So it's kind of a choice. Based on that test, we're gonna do one or the other block of code, and the other one's going to get skipped. Here's an example. I just expanded on the, the weather one. If the weather is sunny, we're gonna to walk to school just like before. Otherwise, I'm gonna take the bus to school. So I really have two choices to get to school. I'm gonna walk, or I'm gonna take the bus. And then the third variation is the if-then-else-if, if, and the if-then-else-if if can also have a, an else on there as well. And then you, no, you notice there that now we have a lot more sockets to fill up. The if-then-else-if if variant is also called an if-then-ladder because you can add as many else-ifs in there as you want, making a big block of code that goes through lots of different variations. 
every time we have an else if, we have to have a new test. The default configuration, it has one else if statement, like the block I have on the right. But you notice that little blue button that looks like a snowflake. That's called the mutator button. When you click on the mutator button, then you can add more else ifs in there. You can also use the mutator button to change the if then into an if then else, or an if then else into an if then else if else. You could just change the variation of this block of code by using the mutator button. The way that it works is you click the button and then you get a pop-up window. In this particular one, it's above, but it'll find space in your viewer window to, to show it. And you can see that on the left-hand side of this pop-up window in the gray, we have all of our different choices. In this particular one, we have an else if and an else. On the right-hand side of the pop-up, we have the configuration of the block as it is now. And so if I wanted to add an else into this if else if, all I have to do is take the else from the left and drag it over to the block on the right. Now the biggest mistake that people make is they try to drag that else down to the actual block. You need to make sure that you stay within that pop-up window and drag it to the right. And then as soon as you let up on the mouse button, then it will add that variation, add that component into the actual block. When you're all done adding or subtracting from the blocks that are in there, then uh, you just have to click off of there somewhere and then the pop-up will close and you'll have your new variation of the if then block. So let's look at an if then else if else example. Now don't get too worried here. There's an awful lot of blocks in here, but if we take it step by step, you can see that it's just repetition of the same thing for different conditions. So if I start up here at the top, my first test next to the if says, if the score is greater than or equal to 90, or if the score is higher, then I'm gonna set my grade variable to an A. So if you get 90% or higher, you're gonna get an A. If it's not greater than or equal to 90%, it's gonna skip the then part and go down to the next else if. And then it's going to check to see if the score is between 80 and 90. Now you notice I don't have to put that in the code. I don't have to put if global score is greater than or equal to 80 and global score is less than 90. I don't have to do that because I've already taken care of the 90 up above. So you're never gonna get a score 90 or greater to get to this else if statement. Now this only works if you put your tests in order and then the, the thing that you're checking needs to coincide with it. If I reverse this and started with 60, then I would have to go with less than or equal to all the way down. And that's why they call it a ladder because it's like rungs in a ladder. You go from one step to the next step to the next step to the next step. So continuing on through here, if it's between 80 or 90, I get a B. If it's between 70 and 80, because everything 80 and above uh, is already taken care of, then I get a C. If it's greater than 60 or between 60 and 70, then I get the D. And then anything else, if it's not an A, B, C, or D, then anything else gets the else statement down at the bottom, which is the F. So that's how a, an if-then ladder works. We need to make sure that it's in the order, either from greatest to smallest or smallest to greatest. And then our comparator there in the middle needs to coincide with it so that we're stripping off different categories as we go along as, so we don't have to make those tests be unwieldy. You should have noticed in that last example there that the conditional test doesn't have to check for equality. It can also check for other things. Now the basic configuration of the block you're going to find in App Inventor is the equals. And you're going to drag that out and then click the little down arrow that's there and you could pick from the variance you see there. The second one is not equals and then less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. We can also do multiple conditions using and and or. That way we can have a single test that tests for multiple conditions. And those are called Boolean expressions. They're called Boolean because there was a French mathematician named Boole that came up with this whole area in logic. 
We use and when both statements need to be true. If either one of them is false, the whole thing is false. We use or when only one of them needs to be true. Now, both of them can be true, but only one of them needs to be true. Here's an example of the and. If it's Friday and it's 7 p.m. Central Time, then the TV show that I'm watching is MacGyver. Here's an or. If it's Saturday, actually that should say if it's Saturday or Sunday, a little mistake on my part there, then the result labels is going to say it's the weekend. If it's not Saturday or Sunday, so it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then it's back to work because it's a weekday. We can also have multi-level conditionals. We have a test within a test. We do that by putting one complete if then or if then else block inside the then or else socket of an outside one. This is called nesting conditionals. And it's called nesting if you think about those nesting dolls, the Russian nesting dolls where you have one big doll, you open it up and there's another little doll in it. And you open that one up and there's a little smaller one, and smaller one, and smaller one until you get to a very tiny one in the last one. They all fit inside of each other. And that's how nested conditionals work. One fits inside the other, and it fits inside the other. And it'll look something like this. Now this is a little bit of code for rock, paper, scissors. And you can see that in the very top there, on the outside if, if the computer gets rock, then we have, in the then block, we have another if that checks what the player has. If the player has rock, it's a tie. If the player has paper, the player wins. And if the player has scissors, then the computer wins. And then we go down to the else if that checks for the second condition for the computer, where the computer has paper, then we repeat that same if for the player having rock, paper, scissors and have the appropriate message. And then we'd have a final else if down there where we check for the computer having scissors and do the same thing. I didn't put the whole thing in there because the only real important thing here is, is that you can see that the inner if fits all in the then and in order to get to that player if that's in the then part the computer has to be rock if the computer's not rock it's going to skip that and go down and try the next variation for the computer and then there'll be an if for that one and so it, it's they're completely nested inside of each other so that's what we have for conditional statements. You could go back to, to Schoology and find the app that you're going to create for this lesson. And then there's an exit quiz over conditional statements. So have fun creating the program and we'll see you next week.